Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I thought we would do some practice questions, just a little bit about electron flow and arrow pushing, which is an essential concept if you want to get a good grade in organic chemistry. Step one, the question says fill in the box, draw in the product. I want to label all my carbons. Okay, so let's say this is carbon one, two, three, four, five. So now the backbone of my structure looks to me as if it stays the same. So I'm going to draw out those five carbons in the same arrangement as they were in the starting material. And then I'm going to label them. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now pick a place to start. So I'm going to start between carbons one and two. So I see that this pi bond moves from between 1 and 2, and it moves between 2 and 3, okay? So the head of the arrow is where the electrons are moving. The back of the arrow is where they're coming from. So the pink arrow, that bond, ends up right there. Yeah, I'll make these different colors. So then the pi bond, the purple pi bond between three and four, where does where is its head of the arrow? Well, it goes between four and five. Four and five. And then the two electrons between carbon five and the chlorine, they jump, they both move, they move, and they attack carbon one. Do you see how this head of the arrow is only pointed at one of the carbons? It's not pointed between two carbons, it's pointed at one of the carbons. So it's going to make one bond to carbon number one, chlorine. That is it, that is all. And with these types of rearrangements, there is no charges in the end because there is always a gap that is filled. So these two electrons move there. And then there's a deficit at one, but since those move over and this moves and attacks the deficit, it ends up gaining the electrons that it lost in the beginning. So yeah, this would be the answer to this question. All right, guys, question number two asks, draw the electron flow arrows to make cyclopentene. So they give us a product. So we must achieve this product through arrow pushing. So we have NaH as our reagent. We know Na is going to be a counter ion, so positively charged. That will make H minus and nucleophilic. Now the question is, well, who is it going to attack? What I like to do is I like to arbitrarily label my carbons just to see how many carbons there are. So I have one, two, three, four, five. And now on my product, I have one, two, three, four, five. So clearly there's a five-membered ring. In our starting materials, there is not, but I did not add or drop any carbons, so these electrons rearranged within this structure to achieve this five-membered ring. So, well, what two carbons don't have a bond between them? Well, carbons one and five. They must have a bond between them in the end because we get a five-membered ring. So I'm going to take this pi bond and go two in and attack it. But every two in must be reciprocated with a two out in this case because you're attacking a carbon that already has four bonds. So this chlorine is going to go two out. And we know we want the chlorine to leave because in the product side, it is paired with Na. So we must have chlorine as the leaving group. So two and two out. What do we get? Everything stays the same, so draw your structure in the same format. Keep everything the same except for the fact that the bond between 1 and 2, that was a pi bond, now becomes a sig sigma bond between carbons 1 and 5 because the head of the arrow was pointed at carbon number 5, and it went from 1, 1 took these electrons and went boom, 2 in. So that would leave carbon number 2 in an electron deficit so electron deficit lose electrons become cationic because the electron let's label it in purple that initially was owned by carbon number two now 
is owned by carbon number one. So carbon number one, you could technically think of this as it stole one of carbon number two's electrons. So we have a positively charged carbon. But we also know we have NaH. So this H minus, since opposites attract, we're going to attack this positively charged carbon. What do we get? It's kind of um, redundant to draw on this hydrogen, but yes, it is there. And we get our product, and then plus Cl minus, and then we know there's an Na plus floating around. So let's put this all together. How would I have drawn these arrows? So if I had to do this all in one pot shot, NaH, I would have went KH minus, goes two in, two over, two out, to get cyclopentene. Bada bing, bada boom. That's it, that's all. Okay, next question. Write the hybrid atomic orbitals for each aerode atom. So we do the bubble method. Well, I do the bubble method. So you're looking for electron density bonding areas. So this carbon bonds in this direction to another carbon. So that would be one bonding area. And you're always going to have 1s, 3p's, and 4d's. 3, 4, 5d's. D, 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 D. So here we have one bubble means cross out a box. So cross out the s. And it also bonds in this direction. So cross out the next box. So how many boxes did we cross out? Well, SP. That's it, that's all. So we must fill in the lone pairs for the next atom, so the nitrogen. Right now it has one, two electrons. So here it must have two more electrons it, as a lone pair. And it also must be bonded to an H. If this is a neutral atom, it's going to have three bonds and it's going to have one lone pair because its formal charge must equal zero. And they did not tell us there was any charges. Uh, if this nitrogen was positively charged or negatively charged, they would have indicated this with a charge. They're not going to make us guess in this situation. So we presume there's also one hydrogen there. So they would have a lone pair. So one bonding region, two bonding regions, and then three bonding regions to the hydrogen. So this would be sp2. So this oxygen, to have a neutral formal charge, would need two sets of lone pairs. So if we do the box method again, so each area to another atom is a bonding region, and each lone pair is a bonding region. So this would be one bonding region, cross out a box. This would be another bonding region, cross out a box. One more bonding region, cross out a box. And one more bonding region. Cross out a box. So this would be sp3. That is it. That is all. I have a video going over the theory behind doing a question like this. I did not cover that in this video because this is just a practice problem um, video. But if you scroll down in my tutorials, I do have a video going over the theory of how to do these questions and how to approach the box method. So finally, we have our last question. Draw the arrows responsible for the following transformation. So I need to move some electrons. Whenever I want to move electrons, I also want, I always want to start at the most charged atom. So where a negatively charged atom would be more reactive than an atom with lone pairs that's neutral, which would be more reactive than an atom with no lone pairs at all. Because an atom with a negative charge is also an atom with lone pairs, but it's an atom that has too many sets of lone pairs. Therefore, it has one extra electron than it usually wants, which makes it negatively charged and reactive. So that would be our oxygen. So how many electrons would it have? Well, it would have three sets of lone pairs. Okay, so we see in the product side that this oxygen only has two sets of lone pairs. And it has two bonds between the carbon that it is beside. So what do we do? We'll take one of these lone pairs to in because we want a bond there. We want that bond to be formed there. 
And then what happens? Well, this cationic charge is no longer present in the final product. So these two electrons must rearrange and go to over. Bada bing, bada boom. That is it. That is all. All right. I hope this practice problem video was helpful and then you guys like this type of content. I have theory video. This would be about resonance. Also, if you scroll down in my videos, I hope you have a great day and let me know if you have any questions about these problems in the comment box down below. Have a good day.